Welcome to Talking Peace with the Western New York Peace Center, being recorded at Think Twice Radio in the home of the future, thanks to our friend and producer, Richard Wicca. Thanks, Richard. And um, also uh, broadcasting on WBNY, Buffalo's original alternative radio station, we thank our friends at WBNY and Buffalo State. Buff State. So um, we like to start out, you know, when we're thinking of thanks, I think of our indigenous friends. I think of the fact that we're on stolen, unceded Haudenosaunee territory, especially Seneca. I think for all of the people on the show right now, for some of you listening or watching, you may be in other either Haudenosaunee or other um, in originally indigenous land that was gotten through trickery or violence. Um, but in spite of all the hardship and attempted genocide, the, uh, our indigenous friends do start every meeting out with thanks. Thanks for Mother Earth, for giving us everything that we need, for the living waters, mini Wachoni, water is life, for all of the, the creatures, the, the swimming, crawling, four-leggeds, and the flying creatures for all the plants and medicinal and the nutritional and all the people who know how to use those plants to our health and the trees, the wonderful air that they give us and the, the thunder beings and brother moon, brother sun and uh, grandmother moon that give us so much. And then uh, all the stars and the, the whole the whole sky world, and of course, our creator, who gives us the love that keeps us going and gave us the original instructions that we should follow so that life will continue in this creation. And then they would say, Nyaway, and the person and the and others would say, no. So Nyaway. No. Thank no. you. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. So I have to say, I'm so grateful to have Jim Anderson on the Radio King, the, um, the, the president of Peace Action New York State, on the steering committee of Peace Action National, who just, uh, just jetted back from, from Paris, where he was at International Peace Talks um, that you could tell us more about in between things. Um, thanks for coming on, Jim. Oh, I'm glad to be here, Vicki. It's, you know, it's family, family time. Right. Well, that's for sure. And I, I, I should say I'm Victory Ross. I'm reclaimed my my teenage nickname. Um, and I am on the board at the Western New York Peace Center, board chair at the moment, um, which Jim has is a, pre a previous board chair, now still ex officio, uh, ex officio board member at the Western New York Peace Center. So anyway, um, so it's great to be here, and thanks so much, Richard. We really thank Richard Wick yeah. for all the work. He keeps us going, kept us going through the COVID, and now through all the every busy week that we still have. <laughs> yes, indeed. But um, so if we could, uh, one thing we always like to start off with an inspirational piece, which is our, our besides the Ganonio, the our values. So. The values, we're, our, our topic tonight is a wonderful one. Dr. King and Riverside Salem Churches and his last movement, his last um, push towards helping us get where we absolutely need to go. And, uh, and, and so what values, Jim, would you think of in connection with that conversation? What are the things you think we want to bear in mind or what, what does it make you think of? It's done, Jerry, that it makes me think of the connectedness of all our issues, mm -hmm. not only now in our understanding, but even in the understanding of Dr. King then, in a, it, at a time when there was much ignorance and too much siloism that kept people from not seeing it. And here today, we recognize that We've had siloism too long, and there are some things we needed to see that we did not see. And the discussion tonight um, uh, that we'll be having will highlight it into listeners and viewers. Um, they will gain some more insights and hopefully some energy and courage 
for the moment in which we all find ourselves. Absolutely. Well, thank you. And I think you really, you know, we could just say good night. <laughs> <laughs> that's really that that's like that is the heart of the message you know that i feel too and we were talking about it a little bit before the show um i, I i'll i'll bring up the values because i always always love to think and i want to shout out to john washington he's the first one who 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 had this quote of dr king on the bottom of his emails and i adopted that and i've kept it all these years because i find it so inspiring when he said I believe that un, uh, that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word in reality. That is why good temporarily defeated is stronger than mm -hmm. evil triumphant. Mm -hmm. So that is very strengthening and uh, courage inspiring, just like you said, Jim. And that thing about truth and love. So what we're going to talk about that and that connectedness. You know, he told that message in truth and in love. You know, yes, really yeah. mean. You know, yeah. He's stronger, and he. You know, when the the thing that people need to understand, because in less than two months, everybody will be, particularly in the U.S., claiming to be oh, Dr. King, and and uh, yeah. what they fail to understand. Uh, Dr. King wasn't about parades and performance. He his his was not uh, a thing of entertainment. His was a, a a life and an action of entertainment. Everything he did had significance in real time. So when we look to the one of the most incredible speeches that was ever given, a lot of people overlook it. They think it's the I have a dream because that's what media push and a lot of people because that's nice and soft. It, it allows you to stay in dream state without seemingly calling you to action. And in the speech he gave at Riverside on April 4th, 1967, that was him calling folks forward to the task at hand. And the thing about it, the speech he gave then on April 4th in 1967, he had already given it in February, parts of it is February of 67. I just saw that. Mm -hmm. And people didn't understand him. You know, when, they, when he gave it them, some people tried to say, oh, that's communism. And they, they misunderstood its connection. And that was the reason why he brought it back to the clergy laity at Riverside because it gave another opportunity for him not only to give that speech, but what people need to remember at that time, he was also in the process of organizing what some people were just seeing happening, or the rebirth happening today, and that's the Poor People's Campaign. Right. And, and which was a large part of the basis why he was at Riverside. I mean, yes, he, in his religious practice, always stood on the side of humanity, didn't like war, had spoken against war, always understood the, the, the role that labor, work, had to do with one's ability to live free and sufficient. And so when he went to Riverside, he understood that not only was the war an inhumane action, and terrible in and of itself, being committed by a nation who had the biggest footprint of being more villainous than good guys, even, and, you know, even forget, you know, people like to say what we did in earlier wars. Well, let's not go there, because I, I stop at the point of the Korea when people said the war to end all wars. And look how many wars we've seen since then. Right. But at Riverside, what he dove into, because he could not overlook the fact that the money needed for human survival here in this country was being sent for more war in Vietnam. Right. And he, when he spoke, it was profound, and a lot of people wasn't ready. 
And that's what we need to pay attention to, because if he was so clear then, the question people would say, well, why didn't everybody go along with it? Well, here's why. You're about to hear it tonight. If you haven't heard it and looked it up and researched it yourself, you're about to hear it in this conversation. When he spoke at Riverside and he made a statement, let's, lo and behold, the, the hawkish elements that exist, but right away went to going to bat speaking against him. Oh, he he doesn't you know he doesn't know what he's talking about. Not only that, the president at the time, LBJ, Lyndon Baines Johnson, right. who was feeling kind of robust because he had hey, he 64 and 65, the voting rights act. So he's feeling like, hey, I help you people. Mm -hmm. And for him, you know, look, well, we'll give you this. We did that. You know, be quiet for a while with more of his position. But Dr. King, what he did, I said, no, no, no. Mr. President, this wasn't about piecemeal. This is about the total package of justice and equity and fairness. It's what Dr. King has always stood for. Well, LBJ, not liking that Dr. King was holding him accountable and wanting him to act and speak in the way he did, he reached out to a lot of black organizations and he basically said to them, hey, look, you got to do something about Martin King. I'm trying to get y'all more money and he, you know, he making it hard. He going to mess it up for me. And what did they do? They took the bait. They went right away. Oh, more money. He's messing it up. And they turned against him. Black newspaper, black organizations like the NAACP, the Urban League, I think of the Philadelphia Inquirer, one of the big black papers in over that way. Mm -hmm. Talked about Dr. King and leading black people the wrong way. Of course, they didn't use it as black people, you know, because in those days they were still talking about colored and Negroes. Right. And and from that moment, the gap between peace and social justice went down that fork in the road and have stayed on that up until a few years ago until Reverend Barber and the movement that he's leading around the poor people organizing that's going on now, a rebirth of what Dr. King unfinished work was about is beginning to recognize it. And quite honestly, in the peace quarters, People in the Peace Corridors have always recognized the element of the finances and what it would take away from human needs. Right. They, right. they may not have always voiced it as strong and as uh, in a manner in, in which they could have done more, but right. we have to remember we are living in a nation that was full of a lot of racism and yeah. in different parts of the country just as deadly as we look, when we look around the world and see where other nations, where people are standing up for justice and meeting some horrible responses from governments and elements that exist where they are. And back then, you had that going on in the U.S. A lot of people don't realize that many people up north who may not have had a real in-your-face confrontation around race concerns or been beaten or whatever and chased or even know what it know of many in their vicinity killed it was different in the south and this and still different in the south right but that that's the backdrop of what we're looking at the additional thing is as i said what dr king was doing was not about entertainment it was about entertainment and so we, in this moment of time, as we get to remember Dr. King, should understand it has to be more than just breakfasts and dinners. Those are okay. There's got to be some action or real thing that right. change the circumstances under which people are living. Right. And there's a lot of work to do there. Every issue that we are concerned about, whether it's climate, whether it's immigration, whether it's jobs, whether it's housing, whether it's education, it's tied up 
in the monies needed being taken right. and channeled to a war effort. And it's just terrible. So, so one of the things I did some research today. So I, I found out even more, you know, more than I, you know, there's still more to find out. But one of the things that I discovered was exactly how. So I know, first of all, Deidre, we miss Deidre in this conversation. She's, yeah. um, she's healing up from a um, cold or bronchial thing. Um, but so. Uh, but I, I was very excited by the topic, and she said that you had brought it up, Jim. And she thought you meant Riverside Salem UCC Church in Grand Island, and you meant Riverside Salem Church in, I mean, Riverside Church in New York City. When mm -hmm. I, I want to say, so what I found out today when I went and called Wayne All, which we did a very um, interesting show that was about the Peace Center's history with Wayne, where some of this we went over, but this was the particular thing I didn't know, was that Ken Sherman, who, you know, uh, Buffalo, uh, Buff, uh, Buffalonian at that time anyway, now living in Canada, he went to that speech. He was there in at Riverside Church and heard the Beyond Vietnam speech, came back, said, we need to do something, right? Inspired to action, as you say. And so he got together with Phil Smith of, uh, Reverend Phil Smith of the uh, Pilgrim St. Yeah. Luke's and um, Donald Brown, who was Presbyterian and a few other people and said, you know, let's start a, a, um, a clergy and lay concern chapter here. And that was, so they decided to do it. And then they said, well, we need a 501c3 to put it under that umbrella. And, and Riverside Salem, UCC of Grand Island, um, it was already moved from Grand Island's old, old church. It had been in Black Rock, had a very progressive, had a history of very progressive action. And so they, they were happy to put this program under their wing of the clergy and lady concerned. So that was very interesting to me. And then, meanwhile, the draft uh, counseling center was closely associated, and and the, the that program was a part of it, but it was not it, right? That was a happening at the same time. The other thing I found out was, and and correct me if if I'm wrong, but what I saw was that clergy and lady concern actually started in 1965 and it was more white than anything. Mm -hmm. And then Dr. King joined in with them. And then of course, now it's associated with him because he went and he was the one and it was that very, very, that very, uh, uh, what do I want to say? Conflictual sort of going against the grain when he was making some progress with the racial issues that what when he got discouraged by that because they were like don't go there but his going there was what put it into the high relief exactly and that's the, and that was the thing that's why it's so important for people to realize how racialized the time was then, right and right. how bold of a move dr king was making and right. those those are the kind of days that in in which you know if you were a person of color and you were interacting with groups that were not of color, people, some folk would tell you, oh, you're a sellout, or you're Uncle Tom. Right. Not, not that there was any credence to it, but they would make those kinds of comments, and that's what would make some people who knew the need to work with people of like mind and like work ethics, you know, they, they, to shy away because they didn't want to be called things. Just being called certain things was too heavy for them to handle. And, and then, of course, the fear. And then, you know, with what they were seeing in the South, how deadly it was, people were afraid. And they had, you know, there's, there's a Christian book, the Christian Bible said, how will the people hear without a preacher? Mm -hmm. And sometimes people get confused with who, who's the preacher. Well, you know, um, the preacher, in my mind, is the one who brings the truth. And, and you know it because when you hear it and it resonates, it's almost like a familiar tune. 
And and so, but without someone pointing out these things so that you'll be in touch with a tune you already know. We learn from a very early age. It's not nice to hit other people. We learn from a very early age, be kind to others. We learn from a very early age when you watch two children who are of different ethnicities encounter each other. It's like a love fest. They play, they enjoy themselves. The only way they get on a different track is someone they'll come, oh, no, 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 oh, no, pull them apart. Right. And not even clear why. It's because of the culture they're living in that make them do those things. So Dr. King, to make that move, and I should also say, that you know his his real involvement around race occurred uh in this the this part of history talking about that it really was Rosa Park that really got him involved on that. That you know it they it talks about Dr. King being a social justice minister in many ways early, but really connecting it the race and, and as well as being brilliant enough to see the money connection as it relates to war mm-hmm. is like phenomenal. And, and, and if anybody really listens to him and considers the, the sense that it makes, they too will be convicted and have to break through their own moments of a culture that Hasn't heard a lot of that spoken to him. And in some ways, got to don't say that here, <laughs> you know. Right. That's why even in this moment, there are still only a few of us who are really boldly making the connection. The, the, the connection, uh, even, look, this is one of the ills of the social justice arena that they, too, have an obligation to come forward to the connections on these two issues. You can't talk about climate and not talk about the militarization that is going on right. around the world. Right. right now, in this last climate meeting, I just saw an article today that talked about why was it that militarization was left out of conversations around climate solution? When, when most of the green gas being emitted on the planet come from all of its military equipment. Right, right. And, and see, and those connections are important. So if you got a climate movement that trying to get good policy here in our city, state, and nation, and don't understand how our policy kind of overlooks, doesn't look at our footprint abroad, what good is the policy? Because you can't fix climate and, and the environment on one side of the world. Right. You, and, and, and so, you know, this kind of daring to think and see the connection is bold. And Dr. King did that when he went to Riverside. His presence there to show that he understood, yeah, we can't legitimately do a poor people's campaign trying to get the monies needed for their survival and, and, and everything that will make them whole and watch that money not be available because it's going to war. And by the way, as we look at war, war is not working. And Dr. Okay. King wasn't the only one. Dr. I mean, if people listen beyond trying on, we look what Dr. King said, the influence of the time in the music the writing, so much was going on speaking against war. And a lot of people kind of, you know, slept through that movement and only now are beginning to wake up because of their adherence to Reverend Barber and to those in the peace movement who have been clarion voices for the longest. Um, we're at the right point, but they're constantly drawing back and talking about this history and letting it be known, look, people will be surprised. I mentioned that I explicitly mentioned the NAACP and the Urban League, not to shame them, but to show you how wrong thinking and directions can happen 
in any area. That's why we always have to be willing to, to within our organization, talk about our connections to social issue when we say we're about social justice. And peace can't talk about peace issue without being connected to social justice and social justice can't talk about social justice issue without understanding the role that militarization plays. Well, this is where I feel very, um, well, can I say, you know, proud and grateful that the Western New York Peace Center was really birthed in response to the Beyond Re Vietnam speech, which talked about the triple evils of, you know, bigotry or racism, right? Yep. Um, the militarism or and war, the war economy, and uh, and lastly, the third being um, the uh, the uh, consumerism, the the materialism, or the poverty that ensues with all the capitalism. So, so those three areas, the, the economic injustice, right, the militarism and violence, and then, and then the racism and bigotry, those three areas. And then he talked about um, environmental degradation and things, but he didn't include it. You could even include it really with the, the economic issues as well. Um, and certainly it also generates militarism back to how everything's connected. So there's, you know, and now now Dr. Um, Barber has included um, religious nationalism, which certainly, I, I mean, uh, patriot, uh, you know, nationalism is certainly another hugely unhealthy thing. It's back to statism and militarism and, and all of that. Actually, I just heard Cornell West was talking about militarism and mm. he defined it as brute force. Yep. Brute force yep. or the threat of brute force. Um, but anyway, so the, the roots of the Western New York Peace Center were in those things. Now, I don't think that in these past uh, 55 years that the Peace Center has been perfect in, in you know, drawing those connections. Certainly, as you said, you know, there's ways, you know, there's there's knowledge and there's inclusivity. There's there's all kinds of factors that need to be uh, well understood and, and well, well um, offered and, you know, and healthily, you know, so it's it's always a work in process. And I think, you know, over the years, you know, we've gotten to a very uh, strong point of back to it's all about principles and the spirit and it's all about how all our issues are connected and that's sort of been the song that the western new york peace center was founded on and it's also been the song throughout with you know with some um errors in in focus or yeah. or or uh delivery you know mm -hmm. or lack of understanding right. you know? but uh but but the but the roots you know the roots of it are are those healthy beautiful roots that are that connectivity and I loved it what you said about intersectionality and connectivity that everybody's thinking like oh yeah now all of a sudden people are realizing no but it was just what exactly what he was preaching at that time yes it was I mean you, you take how many people over the years when you that you know that in everybody's circle of friends where you'll run into a friend and they'll say oh yeah i'm working on education that's their issue okay fine right and uh and somebody over here say oh i'm 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 working on housing and you know but it, it was done in a way like they were miles apart two separate things but they're yet in the same. You ever try and raise a child, and even an adult, but a child in a in a house that is insufficient, that is cold, that uh, that is too small to house and does not adequate learning doesn't go well in there. Right. And you know, and I'm just saying, you so you can't separate education from housing. Automatically, right. you got to connect it. Then right. you realize that, uh oh, oh, yeah, well, they're going to need to be healthy. Uh oh, well, well oh, yeah, health care, 
education and housing, there you go, already connected. So many things began to realize that one without the other is not enough. Right. And the truth of the matter, no matter what issue area that we get a, a good positioning on, we still got a plate full of other ones to deal with. And, and at different times, different issue will move uh, you know, we'll move links ahead and, and get kind of stay. And then another issue will move up and maybe a couple issues will move. But we need all these issues to be moving forward until we get them on a plateau that is equitable for everyone. Now, some people can imagine that. Well, it's, you don't have to imagine that. Start working to just bring some leverage to things to, and connection and you'll automatically pick up a flow. And look, working, doing justice work, doing social justice work is no different than peace work. And they may have different names, but people don't need to be confused and thinking that they're about two different things. They're about, so we're talking about when doing the peace work, social justice, it's huge because it takes a whole big worldwide picture. A lot of people who talk about social justice work usually only talk about it within their community. But we're a worldwide community. We got one planet. Right. All of us together got to be caring for it. And we already know, that, again, as they embrace Dr. King, what did he say? Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Right. And 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 if not, you know, people sometimes take what Dr. King has said as like, oh, great poetry. It is not. It may be poetic in sound. It may have a nice rhythm you like, but again, it's substance for the heart and mind to drive our work ethic to make a world that works for all of us. Now, some people are stuck in the lane of, well, as long as I got mine, it's not enough. We all need to have a fair share. We all need a, I'll go beyond a fair share, equitable that ensures that we too can live. And there are different elements in there, but we need to care for the least of them. Right. Everybody is not, you know, trying to shice us or be lazy. We're dealing, we turn down systems that have locked people out, blocked people out, that have been oppressive and suppressive to such a degree that, that the people never had a chance. But now we're realizing that it's important. And anyone who has a child, they want that child to have an opportunity in the world. The only way to ensure that happens is to tear down every blockage that we know that could prevent it, not only for our child, but for any child. One of the things I think of, you know, to, to make progress on those issues that helps me to think about two, two things. One is principles and the spirit. So the principles, if we have principles like, you know, the human rights, you know, the, the Declaration of Human Rights that was adopted by the, um, by the UN, and or the Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People. And we take these different principles that have been espoused, even, you know, in the, the Nuremberg principles, right? So just take different principles. Principles like um, you can take religious principles. You just take principles and use those. And then also the spirit. So it's not about the letter of the law. And also, as we know, sometimes principles are in conflict, yeah. right? So yep. one principle would tell you to do this, but the other principle would tell you to do that. And that's where I also like to go to the spirit, or you could just say the spirit of true nonviolence, ahimsa, as Gandhi called it, as Dr. King studied Gandhi. And Gandhi said, you know, not hating or blaming. It was nonviolence was so extreme that it meant not hating or blaming, which brings me to what I like to sometimes call it in a more because that gets very abstract. I love it when it's very abstract, but not everybody does. And sometimes it's not as helpful as the simple tangible. So the tangible would be communication and cooperation. 
Mm-hmm. Right? Or even just you, you're absolutely right. Listen. And that yeah, and, and that that is you, you know again, another good book, one that many use, it said um, you know, um, to always be ready for reconciliation. Mm-hmm. See, and to always be ready for reconciliation, you can't be saying, oh, you don't know what they did to me. You can't keep dragging out some way back. Well, they did this to my whatever, whatever, wherever. We know horrible things have happened on the planet and continue to happen. Part of it is we're imperfect people. Mm-hmm. We're not perfected. And at some time, some of us who think that we don't do any harm or any wrong will find ourselves on the wrong side of an issue, in fact, more time than we care to acknowledge or admit. The sure. challenge is and when you're on the wrong side of an issue, what are you able to keep yourself in a group for reconciliation? And that's a challenge because there are some things that happen. You hear people that all the time say, oh, I, I, I can forgive, but I can't forget. <laughs> what does that mean? If you're going to walk around, you know, okay, I'm remembering it. Don't tell me you're remembering it without having. It, it, don't even lead yourself into Lead yourself into, like, you know, to reconcile. If I'm on the path of reconciling, that that ill me won't be reviewed and remembered in a way it once was because I'll be looking for it in a different manner that brings us together. The challenge we have now, not only in the world, but still in community, is where harm has been done Mm -hmm. and people haven't healed, and yet they still got to find a way to live together. We look at Ukraine and Russia, as horrible as it is, the ugliness that has occurred, we still need the fighting to stop and back to negotiation table to see how do we salvage what we can before we create so much destruction, it would be impossible to heal. The world right now is on a footing to where it could go deep into war, which is why people need to understand if you want to ensure social justice here in the country, you have to be have an international land of social justice in the world. Right. And, and when you get that, you'll find a different kind of energy moving you. You'll really be in key with Dr. King. Right. That you could you could speak anywhere in the world. You mentioned my trip to Paris and speaking at the, the National Peace Congress there. Well, it's because of the work we do that's around peace. And social justice, they look at me as an international peace and social justice activist organizer every day. Absolutely you are. And And I would say you've been very bold and clear and you have always been on that page. And I want to say, you know, when, you know, as we said, you know, the peace movement and the other social justice movements, and I mean, they've also not like there's one other social justice movement. No. No. There's all these different ones and they're all splintered. And you have always been on that page and it shows by the variety of things that you deal with in in your radio show, you know, conversations with Jim Anderson or the things that you deal with in the various, um, in the many uh, uh, organizations that you work with, which includes Western New York Peace Center, PUSH, uh, peace action, uh, citizen action. You know, where where, where uh, have been, Vicky? I have to I have to say for for both you and I, um, people have seen us together in many spots, and sometimes when they see us together, they don't know we didn't collaborate. Say, well, we there are times when we have meet plan to meet up, but we show up at places that our spirit won't let us not go there. We can, we can be at one place and help and do, and we find time to drop in somewhere else to help lift the load, to clear the road. And, and there's something about that. And so when we talk about Dr. King, we're not talking about Dr. King as an entertainer. We're talking about Dr. King as ones who have been infected by not only his living and his words as you continue 
utilizing that quote that John turned you on to, but it's in us. And people, right. as you say, they see it in us. In fact, we don't have to call somebody and say, hey, do you need something? We got plenty of calls. <laughs> probably, we're probably almost like, dare I say, the fire department called upon to respond, and, and we do. And, and we're blessed for that. People don't know we, we have struggles just like everybody else. We have to figure out how we're going to live. But I think our testimony would be in doing this piece work. We never had a day of starving. We never had a place where we couldn't lay our head. And right. then now, family of peace, it's okay. just really caring for one right. another. Right. And it's something that the social justice movement folks can learn because a lot of organizations got so caught up in creating an organization. Everybody want to have a 501c3, not right. that. But, you know, um, what's more important to be doing the work. And a lot of the work that we've done came without any money and only working with like-minded people who saw the effort and said, well, if I can't get out there with you, I can make a little contribution towards the effort. Sure. And, you know, it's not, it's not, we're not like a wealthy organization. Oh, God, no. <laughs> one know? Thing, but one thing I do want to say, just to say, now, first of all, we already talked a little bit about sort of the way we approach things and, and Dr. King and Dr. King well, he sort of straddled that, and I think you do too. But but I want to say a word for the people who do focus, right? Mm -hmm. Because we need to focus also. So so there is this way where sometimes when it's all connected, it's okay, it's all connected. So now what do we do? Well, we work on all these different fronts. Well, some people are just like they get like a dog with a bone, and they're just like, this is the one I'm working on, and I'm on this one. You cannot move me on to another one that's sort of similar or even in the same general topic, which it might be. But no, no, they're just on that one thing. And I can mention like Fair Fines and Fees Coalition. Hallelujah. Huge success that that group had, that most of it was uncredited to the group. But the right. group really spearheaded. And I want to shout out to Jolanda Hill. God yeah. bless him. Uh, yeah. Very hard. But um, and 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 George Nicholas and you know a lot of anyway there yep. I can go a lot of different directions but I want to say even Diana Strablo, for exa the example mm -hmm. that no, uh, Northern Access Pipeline mm -hmm. that is threatening and still threatening us and she has been like there's nothing and she might not that she never ever goes to another thing that's to support a group or something but as far as getting involved in anything else laser focused she knows and we need that we we yeah. need those who are who are right. like you know the guardians in many ways and the gatekeepers for there and okay. and the, and while they're doing that see as we identify things that are connected to to right. what they're doing it doesn't mean pull them off because those are folks who are on the point right of of what they're looking at and developing it further and it doesn't, it doesn't, keep, they don't say, oh, don't, don't talk about the connections of the issues right. to each right. other. They want that. It bolsters right. them. Right. It, it also brings alignment and, and workers and people to support them who are not necessarily on it like they are. Right. All, of have, it, all of us have a flurry of issue areas that we show up to to help lift. We may not be there every day. But we show up and our shoulders count as we help lift and stand with them. And then we move on and there'll be something else because all of these are connected to our lives. So, yeah, blessings and how fortunate we are to have those who can, who can man a post, a woman a post right. on behalf of all of us. They're not going the wrong way. It could be said in many ways about Dr. King. While he understood the connections, he took it into, for him to go into the clergy and these group, he understood and he amplified it up speaking. Yeah, they were marveled at him, even while some groups have said, well, peace and social justice, at that, that, that time they said, peace and civil rights don't go together. Well, I, I look, and what, what, what is the slogan that many have today still? 
no justice, no, no peace. peace. No peace, no justice. So we just, they go together. And that's what we need people to understand. We need to get them out of that miseducation about there is no connection. And, and, and if they would look at the discretionary budget of the U.S., Thank you. And when they see in that money will anywhere from 57 to 61 percent going to the Pentagon budget and three cents for housing, five percent for education. Right. What kind of craziness is that? You know, and when the people ask for money for their issue areas, as Dr. King was doing and as Reverend Barber was doing, when they go to ask, what did the government do? elected say, oh, we don't have any, we, oh. Actually, you know, you're reminding me of in my research today, which I already knew this, and I, I this is a really important thing for us to talk about, is um, a clergy and lady concerned after, after Dr. King was murdered, um, they went on to continue. They, they, they were clergy and lady concerned, they were clergy and lady concerned about Vietnam, and then they changed it back to clergy and lady concern. But some of the things, they went after other topics, like, you mm -hmm. know, about what was going on in, in South and Central America and, and the U.S. bullying and, and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, invasion, really, aggression and um, mm -hmm. nasty tricks. But also, but the one they, one of the things they really went after more than anything, this is why I wanted to talk with you about it, is the war profiteering. So first of all, I want to say two things. One, opportunity cost when you were talking about that the opportunity cost of the money and energy time and energy and person yep. power that goes into all that those efforts to intimidate control you know get resources uh, uh you know with illicit means or just all the weapons that we can't use or it or it or it, or it, it encourages us into using what to speak of the nuclear and all the opportunity cost of all of that is all our unmet needs Yep, but, you're but, absolutely right. And then meanwhile, these people are making huge amounts of money. So that is the thing. So the following the money, so part of, so that's back to how everything's connected. Not only is it is it uh, polluting the earth and everything like that and causing all, you know, and, and interrupting people's productive cycles that they could be doing other things with, but it's also, um, you know, in, uh, 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 Re resulting in with between that and the capitalism, the militarism and the capitalism means back to that flow of resources all going up to the the one percent, the point one percent is getting accelerated through the war profiteering and all those companies that are cashing in on mm -hmm. war machines. You're absolutely right, and as you speak. A classic example, we, you, you know, we hear coming out of the D.C. the talk about, oh, not wanting Iran to be able to get a nuclear weapon. Not that they have one, but if they build enough nuclear energy, oh, we can't allow that because they're worried about it. But check this out. So we, the one thing about nuclear energy is that it's not clean, renewable energy. Right. And and it is dangerous. It's like it's like Russian roulette. It, right. You know, people think they got a hand on it. No, no, they don't. That's why the headlines and, and they worry about the nuclear plants in, in the Ukraine and Russia in the area about yep. what could happen. And even even without anything further happening with a nuclear plant, look at the accidents that have already happened with around that but right. here's the slippery slope here that people in new york and particularly those who are concerned about climate justice in new york state as the organization new york renewed is leading the fight right to change this energy and equation of how we have in the state and good good sound policies and money to help people be able to mitigate and move forward in some way to 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 be able to survive and have clean good jobs jobs that are that pay good salary 
and and bring in the clean renewable energy factors that are available right now. Well, during the hearings mm -hmm. around New York, while the, the 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 state panel was going around wanting to hear what people were saying, right. and many who were calling for the better climate thing, the slippery slope and what went past some people was the discussion around nuclear energy. Oh no, that the, is so thorny. The, That's the been gas, like that. the gas companies. They all came in. They already know that there's a formidable force that's demanding renewable energy be brought in and so forth. What they're trying to do is pull in the sparks wagon and urging the state uh, forces to say to them, uh, yeah, we there needs to be more investment in nuclear energy. No. And many of the, unfortunately, many of the, the climate organization doesn't hear that. See, this is what happens when, when there's a gap in knowing how things are impacted coming down the lanes of different issue areas. In the hearings, you didn't hear any of them pushing back on it. I pushed back on it because I know that all these gas companies right. said, break, you know, they're so slid in it. They didn't even fight us who are pushing for clean renewable energy on the things that we were doing pushing for they were saying well the state needs to do more to invest in nuclear energy the oh my god exactly you see because it's, so because it's a potential nuclear weapon just in its very they, existence for they one. Know they're, they're going for the money just as you point out they're going for the enrichment the part and the danger and so if, and the, if the other thing is that the nuclear danger makes, you know, climate catastrophe. We know we're already getting the the effects of it, but the nuclear nuclear winter could wipe all that out so that it's like that's irrelevant. Exactly. Because that can happen in a moment. Or, exactly. You know, and especially we're playing with fire already with it. Yeah, now, exactly. I, and the waste from that stuff takes we don't. They don't know how to deal with the waste. The half, it, 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 the half life is like a million years or something. Exactly. Like that. That's why countries that they hope nobody is paying attention to, they try get them to buy our garbage and junk and well, stuff. Well, we have it here in Western New York. Yes, we do. That's what we okay. do. And they. Yes. In the West Valley, which is still a struggle, I don't think they ever did what they needed to do. You, you know, about covering the, the West Valley while they were taking it down, um, doing enough uh, monitoring. And, you know, I mean, there's still um, uh, nuclear waste up around Niagara Falls, up around the tunnel, the, the Tuscarora Reservation, especially. And of course, you know, again, as Agnes would always say, you know, the, the indigenous people are on every every part of the nuclear chain. Exactly. Um, I need to tell you that we are down to, we have five minutes, which is so oh, time flew. But it's not, but it's a short time. So yeah. um, I like, or it's getting now closer to four minutes. <laughs> but so just, you know, we've been talking about what people can do and I want to just make it a little more pointed about what people can do. And um, so I would just, first of all, mention WNYPeace.org to go to our website and see what's going on there, including other people's events that we promote, um, as well as our own and, and different initiatives and, and, and campaigns. Um, but, you know, I just say people can choose, you know, if you want to be in a focus one area and put your energy in that, but just that awareness of either using the principles and the spirit or, and just that awareness that all of our issues are connected. You're absolutely right. I did, there's, there's so much for us to be connected on, not only here at home, but abroad too. Mm -hmm. it, even the backdrop, unfortunately, of the tragedy that we witnessed here in Buffalo, right. we need to think about what warlike activity is being done abroad in our name in country where children are growing up, not knowing that bombs and weapons being used around in their where they're at, it's not natural. Where if we say we care about families being able to live and, and have the opportunity to survive, 
Well, we need to think about not only ensuring it here at home, but make sure our international footprint is not creating more of that abroad. And, and that's where we've been lax. We've taken the word of our politician too much without holding them accountable to do what we the people need them to do. That's why we have to be civically engaged. Again, thanks to those who keep their eye on civic engagement in, in the political elements, um, we need folks there who remind us, hey, look, you got to hold this, this congressperson, this local politician accountable if they're doing things that are and talking about things that are not healthy for all of us. This is not a well, just for some, this is for all. Look, being pro-Black doesn't mean you anti-white. Being uh, pro-Native American doesn't mean you anti-anybody. It's good to have that, but we all have to be pro-humanity right. and render that to each other, not excluding each other. That means some of the hearing of stuff that have gone in our ears from years past and from some dinosaurs who still talk in a negative way, we have to refuse to hear. And I offer that up in the sense of we know there are still people who are caught up in the plan the race game the wrong way, saying things and contribute to the furtherance of keeping people divided. We know that people have been left out. I mean, look, we need only look at our sisters and brothers in the age in the, who, who, who experience homophobia because of their choice of lifestyle. We need to tear down everything that is blocking the road for people to be all they can be. Right. We can do this, but we need to be aware and particularly in this moment that Dr. King's message at Riverside mm -hmm. was a message that don't get stuck at the dream. In fact, I would urge people if they would so will, even in churches or wherever, that they might collectively read together Dr. King's speech at Riverside. Yeah. Share in that. To grind themselves in understanding more better what he was talking about. To, to see how dividing people up occurs in the culture when they realize that people are amassing for the good of all, that's what we need. That is what we need. Well, I, I just got to say, it's great to, when what we need is being inspired by you, Jim, because you do, you do put it all out there in just a very eloquent way and, and with the vision and the inspiration to help us. So I just got to say that this is Talking Peace. We're so grateful for you to come on. You know, friend of the show, you've been co-host of the show half the time. <laughs> so anyway, um, so this is Talking Peace, and together we've been talking peace in truth and love. Indeed. Thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you. Hey, always a pleasure. I'm, I'm looking back to getting back more and and doing more, um, this is our moment. Because I think right. some people are, are running, where can I go? And we need to, be, what's that thing that said, keep a light in the window? Right. Yeah. There's yep. a light in the windows of the peace house and those who, are, if, you, if you need an embrace, if you need somewhere to come talk and rest, you can rest and learn and get re-spirited up and get online with us. The, the front line of all of our future are the peacemakers, young and old. Right. Well, making peace everywhere. Yeah. Broad. We That's need right. To it. That's right. Yes. People on the planet. Right. Yeah. Common yeah. good and all together now. So well, I anyway. love you, Vicki. And, and, you know, to do this work, look, you're one of those stalwarts that, you know, when people right. think, when they think of peace work, they think of Vicki, it's synonymous. And well, this ain't something you ain't striving for that. It just, that's how it is. And look, quite comforting in more ways than you know. And we will never know, you know, it, it, it is quite comforting. And, and it, it, it's just a blessing to be able to do this work and to remain humble. And I mean, it's like, you're talking about the road opening up. 
in profound ways. We ain't got no mansions. Like I said, we ain't got millions of dollars. But I, our testimony is the beauty of the world we have seen and the possibilities of the world we know it can be. And we plan to be part of helping to lead it and to go in all those directions we need until we have that world that works for all of us. And even if we don't finish it on our watch, on our watch, everybody be able to say, oh, yeah, you know, this is, they'll know what we're working on. They'll see the light. They'll see the trail. And our work will not be in vain. Oh, it's, we're going to, you know what I like when I think it's happening? <laughs> it is. It yeah. is. It is. It is just happening, and some people still waiting to see if it's where it's coming from. Every day you open your eyes, the young people that are rising up, even within our organization, who are ready. And how they the methodology of working, and they have been so comfortable with it, but the new visionaries, the new energy, the new brilliance is coming in with ways that hadn't yet been considered and they got to make room for them. It's like, well, we were, right. well, wait a minute, I'm not, uh-uh, organizations, you better be ready because they're here and, they, and they're performing. And if we don't bring them in, you know what? They'll create their own group. And that's okay too, but we need to be a, a, a collection of groups together. Right, solidarity. Yes, yes, indeed. Solidarity. Well, thanks to Jillian and Richard. Thank you, Richard. Thanks so very much. Uh, Vicki? Yeah. Uh, overnight, I, a lot of the settings disappeared on my computer. Uh -huh. If you could send me the YouTube password for the Peace Center so I could put it on the YouTube page. You know, um, ooh, do I have it? That would be my question. Um, so, uh, uh, well, I'll let y'all go. So, the I don't have it up here. So, yeah, okay, we'll let you go, Jim. Thanks a Jillian. Thanks a Kajillion. Love you both. Hey, okay. Star Richard, really appreciate all that you do. Oh, you're most welcome. All right, peace now. Bye. So, if you want to, if you want, if you want to wait a second, I'll go down and see if I have it on my little cheat sheet. Yeah, or you could ask Deidre. Or you could even text Deidre, and meanwhile, I'll look for it. I'll do that. Okay, so I'll be right back, and I'll, I'll see if I have it.
So far, I don't see it, but it's, it's not uh, on your it's not on your cheat sheet, sheet, huh? It's not. But you know what else? I have a feeling if I look back on my text with you or with Deidre, it could be that I can find it that way. Oh, that's a good idea. I didn't think of that. <clears throat> Let me see, because I know you've had it when I didn't. Because, I mean, I've always had a bit of a... I don't know why. That one always seems to get out of the loop for me. Um, hmm. Well, I'm about to give up on this one. Um, so far, no good. Okay, then the other one. I think the other one I could try is, I think Nicole might have given it to me. So I'll look at that. Here, here it is. Here it is. Yes. Now, is this turned off so it's not broadcasting? Yeah, it's turned off so it's not broadcasting. Okay, everywhere it's turned off. Okay. So it's. Um, so it's wnypeacecenter at gmail.com is the username. And the password is peace with a capital P yeah. for numeral four, all capital A, humankind, capital H. I give you credit for finding that. No, Sure. Well, I forget lots of things, so I have to think of ways to other ways of finding them. <laughs> you know? So I should write that down on my little cheat sheet so that we don't have to go through this again the next time I'm looking for it. Can I have the uh, email address again? It's, uh, wait a minute, it's Western New York Peace Center, so W-N-Y Peace Center. Okay. Just, you know, full out, no caps. Yep. Gmail.com. Let me try it. Yeah, you try it, and I'm getting a pen so I can write it down. Okay. And I'm going to put it in my cheat sheet at the same time so that... So it worked? Yeah, it works. Oh, good. Good, good. Yeah. Great. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Well, it's good to see you. Yeah, good to see you, too. So, you no, know, I have to tell you what happened just by the way. You know, when I, I had um, sent Deidre um, a list of topics because I was trying to get ahead of the game. This is back in August. Mm -hmm. And she didn't get to it. 
And I just felt like at a certain point, it was just too hard because it wasn't she, her focal point and I had the responsibility and I didn't have the leeway, right? Because it was still her show and the, and the daily operations of the Peace Center, those daily decisions should be made by her. That's why she's the executive director, right? Yeah. So that was on purpose, why I stepped down, right? So it just, you know, at a certain point, so I just told her, you know, from now on, you know, when I just realized it just seemed like it was time, you know, it was getting to be too hard for me to do it that way. Mm -hmm. So I, I just said, you know, from now on, you're doing it. And then whenever you need me or want me to do some part of it, just tell me and I'll do it. You know, I, you know, if I can, that I would just do it. But just that the default would be that she's doing it mm -hmm. unless she asked me. And that was the big switch that happened. And then it went, you know, to night and day. You know what I mean? So it was like, I'm doing it all the time. Because the thing was, it was, she was going to do it. But as long as I was the default, it's just so easy to let me keep doing it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it just, it just happened at the right time. She'd been the director for about a year, you know, and then, and also then I took my big trip. I took a trip to Newfoundland. That was really fun. Wow. Very big adventure. Um, and uh, did she's you, been... Did you experience a lot of nature there? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, Richard. And not only that, I outdrove the hurricane. <laughs> I came in to port a basque in Newfoundland the same day. I mean, at 6.30 p.m. And that night they had houses washed out to sea. They had people washed out to sea. From, it was uh, the hurricane. Uh, so you, you, know, you arrived after or before? I arrived really with the hurricane. Uh, wow. the hurricane. I guess the worst of it came later that night, but it was already happening when I got there. Wow. And, and, and the way it happened was first it was, well, first it was I was going to take this trip out west, you might remember, and that fell through. And so then when that fell through, I thought, well, I was going to go to the Adirondacks anyway, so why don't I just keep going, right? Yeah. And so then I found out a couple, like two days before I left, I found out it was going to rain every day. And then I found out it was because of the hurricane. Hmm. And then I found out that the hurricane was headed right for where I was going. But then I thought, well, the ferry won't operate if it's unsafe. Well, then I found out, and oh, and I drove 4,000 miles in two weeks. That's but a anyway, lot of driving. It's a lot of, that it's a lot, lot of sitting down. It was a lot of, it was too much sitting down, but it was so, it was so wonderful. I mean, I can't,